antibiotic puts a selective pressure on the bacteria so that that there is something that is going to kill so if we add something that is going to kill a living form the living form is going to evolve it is going to go under gradual mutations by which it will evolve to develop a resistance towards it because it's life threatening but quorum sensing inhibition is not life threatening to the bacteria it can still survive it can still divide and therefore it will not generate any resistance toward quorum sensing molecules so nowadays i mean it is felt to be like quorum sensing inhibitors are one of the safe form to inhibit uh, the growth of pathogens hey welcome to biotech talks in episode 7 dr sauche explained to us about antimicrobial resistance the phenomenon by which the pathogenic microbes no longer respond to medicines antibiotics that is a major problem that our generation is facing right now and will be facing in future much more so what are the solutions that we should be looking at so just our data explained to us about fast therapy and anti quorum sensing molecules so anti quorum sensing molecule Uh, the phenomenon of quorum sensing that is what the topic of today's podcast is so what is quorum sensing why bacteria and other like forms show the phenomenon of quorum sensing and how development of anti quorum sensing molecules can help us to deal with the problem of antimicrobial resistance and much more will be explained to us by dr sunil saroj in this podcast now dr sunil saroj is associate professor at symbiosis international deemed university and he has explained uh, very eloquently about uh, quorum sensing and i am sure that you will enjoy this podcast thank you hello sir how are you good yeah uh, so yeah. what is quorum sensing uh quorum sensing so um, actually it's a phenomenon i mean uh, that helps the bacteria to communicate among each other so the bacteria is i mean it stays in a very diverse kind of an environment where it is like present uh, with its own uh, fe- i mean species as well as it's in association with the bacteria coming from the other species as well as the other genus as well so overall the bacteria wants to understand who its neighbors and also while doing that it also want to understand what is the count of its own people so like it is just like a uh, human behavior so like uh, the humans bacteria are also like we can say a very social living beings so uh, they like to understand their environment and the people around them like we want to understand the, the people around i mean when we live in a city in a society we would like to know what is the population density of the society if we are living in a, a complex in an apartment we would like to know who our neighbors are and from where those neighbors are coming i mean what kind of uh, ethnicity they belong all those information we need so similarly bacteria also needs those kind of information to survive so it is generally uh, and like way to live and like uh, so bacteria like also have faces like us faces lot of struggle like it is like and we in bacteria when for humans we say to be struggle for bacteria we generally describe it to be as stress so most of the life forms are like throughout under one or other kind of stress so bacteria has to face stress of nutrient competition they have to face stress of attack from bacteriophages it has to face stress by for the change in the ph and all those factors change in temperature so many things it needs to know and overall its behavior is like uh, taken care by what kind of bacteria or the other species are around it and also its own population density because when we say uh, there is no single cell of bacteria that exists so normally bacteria planktonic cells generally do not examine just are found only during their transitions from during from one place of attack that we call as biofilms so they disperse from a biofilm they go at other place and then they form a biofilm so within all those things they need to communicate so quorum sensing is one of the way by which the bacteria is able to communicate with each other and the word quorum is mostly related to a population density phenomenon so all bacterial communications that take place that helps the bacteria to understand its own population density as well as the population of neighboring neighboring species so that kind of phenomenon is called as quorum sensing okay 
okay yes. so uh, how this quorum sensing phenomenon helps pathogenic bacteria so let's say uh, there is like a bacteria like a pathogen so normally when we say something to be as a pathogen that is something coming out from not from the human body is coming something from the outside so let's say a pathogen enters into a human body and then it the first thing you would like to do is like to find a place of attachment within the human body be it in the nasopharynx uh, like epithelia so like gastric epithelia or on the skin wherever it wants uh, so first it will like uh, with the help of the preform structures it would like to like get attached to those places but once it is attached like being a pathogen so like it has to have a few characteristic either it should produce some toxins or either should it should invade the tissues because when we say something to be as a pathogen um, it relies for some of its nutrient on the host so it has to take something from the host for its survival for that that is the reason it secretes toxin to like to outcompete other cells it secretes uh, invasions to invade the epithelial cells so it can go and reside in them so while doing so if there is only one cell of that pathogen entering into the human system and starts expressing all of its virulence factors it will be noticed immediately by the host defense mechanism systems and they will immediately remove that pathogen so now the bacteria are gets attached to the surface it starts to divide so it divides over a period of time it increases into a certain number so till that time it is not expressing much of its virulence factors and once it reaches to a certain number so then with the help of quorum sensing it can like secrete all of its virulence factor at once so let's say there are one pad one bacteria enters slowly it divides let's say it reaches to 10 cells now with the help of quorum sensing they can understand that they have reached to a population density that may be equal to 10 and now all of the 10 cells can start an attack onto the host together so this way they can like evade uh, the human immune i mean immune responses and also they could evade the attack from the neighboring bacteria as well so that is how quorum sensing helps the bacteria into like overcome uh, host defense mechanisms and thereby assist their pathogenesis so uh, in my, uh, in my seventh episode of biotech talks i was discussing antimicrobial resistance with dr yogesh sauche mm -hmm. and in that he explained some solutions to it and one of that was developing anti quorum sensing molecules so can you please elab elaborate on that so as i said like uh, quorum sensing is very important for most of the pathogens to understand its own population density and then express the virulence factors so if we are a, and this quorum sensing is just not one kind of bacterial communication there are many type of such kind of systems evolved by different pathogens so like they generally use secondary metabolites for mostly this kind of sensing so if we are able to understand to which signals this bacteria respond and which signal is going to generate what kind of response in the bacteria so normally quorum sensing is a very simple thing it requires few stages like production of the quorum sensing molecule release of the quorum sensing molecule and then there has to be a receptor to receive those quorum sensing molecule and an appropriate response has to be generated accordingly so if we are able to understand all this mechanism at each of these stage we will be able to devise a method by which we can block the signaling among the bacteria itself if we block the signaling among the bacteria the bacteria is not able to understand its own population density it is not able to understand its uh, neighbors and also like if we see we will be able to uh, block some of the host pathogen interactions as well so let's say uh, bacteria can also respond by this way uh, to many of the host secreted factors we can take lactone sorry lactates we can example is the epinephrine so all these factors help the bacteria to understand in which region of the body is there so we have something called as tissue specificity let's say salmonella is a food borne pathogen it causes gastrointestinal infections but we we have not seen salmonella to cause respiratory tract infections uh, we have not seen salmonella to cause meningitis so there are tissue specificity associated with all of these pathogens and not any of the back pathogen can go and invade any of the tissues so all these mac and host pathogen interactions are also uh, greatly influenced by uh, 
the bacterial communication systems. So if we are able to identify those specific molecules and the mechanisms by which they are transported within the bacteria, because these molecules by somehow needs to enter into the bacteria to show a response. So if we are able to identify those transporters and if we are able to identify once they are inside, they need to bind to some kind of receptors. If we are able to identify those receptors or which we call it as a response regulators. So if we are able to identify them, we will be able to mimic or we will be able to block uh, those uh, transport as well as their binding to those receptors. And once we are able to do that, the bacteria no longer remains pathogen because it is not able to express the virulence factors. So if it is not expressing a virulence factor, it behaves like a common cell. So then we do not need an antibiotic to kill it. So if an antibiotic puts a selective pressure on the bacteria, so that, that there is something that is going to kill. So if we add something that is going to kill a living form, the living form is going to evolve. It is going to go under gradual mutations by which it will evolve to develop a resistance towards it because it's life threatening. But quorum sensing inhibition is not life threatening to the bacteria. It can still survive, it can still divide and therefore it will not generate any resistance toward quorum sensing molecules. So nowadays like, it is felt to be like quorum sensing inhibitors are one of the safe form to inhibit uh, the growth of pathogens. However, still if we want to eliminate, uh, so again it can be a, what you call a, a concentration related phenomenon. So if we remove the quorum sensing molecules, the bacteria is still there. Mm -hmm. But our ultimate goal is to kill. So normally quorum sensing inhibitors are generally used in conjunction with the prevalent uh, antibiotics. So at the same time we are stopping the bacteria to communicate and also we are adding antibiotics to kill it. So independently it is not uh, uh, like advised method or it is not developed in that sense that you just will get rid of the pathogens. So with having those inhibitors it is difficult to get rid, we will require the antibiotics. So we are not seeing a day where we will not require an antibiotics by this method, we will require unless and until we kill the pathogen, we cannot remove it out of the system just by adding the quorum sensing inhibitors. Yeah, and again, uh, there are a lot of, um, so earlier it was believed uh, bacteria cannot develop resistance towards this quorum sensing inhibitors, but still we are blocking its one way. So it is like I said, the bacteria behaves like a human. So let's say for a human, we say like, uh, <clears throat> if he has to move from point A to point B, and there are two ways, one is a shortcut and one is the long cut we prefer taking a shortcut but something happens and that road is blocked we will go through the long way method and even if that road is blocked we will find a third way so similarly for the bacteria like quorum sensing it helps lot of their uh, like behavior if we are going to block it it is going to find some other way some shorter way or some longer way to overcome that so slowly we have seen like as the more research is progressing, I mean it is possible for the bacteria to generate or uh, to evolve resistance towards quorum sensing inhibitors as well. So overall, so general advice for oral, be it antibiotics, be it uh, inhibitor for quorum sensing molecules or anything, it's a, uh, I mean used only when needed. So I mean still we cannot have an indiscriminate usage of any of those molecules that is going to inhibit the behavior of a life form. So if we do that on a regular basis, they are going to evolve, they will develop resistance, be it antibiotics or be it quorum sensing molecules or be it bacteriophage treatment. So it does not matter, they will develop resistance sooner or later. So it's a continuous fight. It is a continuous fight. They develop a resistance, we develop new method. So that fight is going to continue because this bacteria is also evolving to become more and more host specific. So there are some pathogens that are host specific, some pathogens that are not only they can reside in the environment, they can reside in one of the host in humans, and they can reside in animals as well. So we have human specific pathogens, we have uh, like a diverse range of pathogens. Some of the pathogens can stay on abiotic surfaces for a long time like salmonella, listeria. They can remain in environment without getting killed for almost months or sometimes years as well. But we have pathogens like Neisseria, Streptococcus, within two hours, if they are left outside those, they get killed. So even pathogens are like slowly evolving to become more and more host specific. So they require a host to survive. So even they will be evolving to develop new strategies where their survival, I mean, they need to survive as well. 
So we cannot get rid of those. They will be there and they will be evolving. Yes, so we have to fight and keep devising new methodologies to stop their growth. Yeah. Hmm. So are there any other life forms which show the phenomenon of quorum sensing other than bacteria? So something have been reported even in like some of the viruses behavior also like gets regulated by quorum sensing behavior but still that field is in a very nascent stage not much known because even with the quorum sensing I mean uh, after the lot of work from uh, Boni Bassler's group uh, with help of a Vibrio Harvey I mean they were able to show that quorum sensing helps in bioluminescence and now from bioluminescence to virulence and like later on to host pathogen interactions then later on to like uh, determining the overall composition of the microbiome itself the field has traveled a lot just but traveled a lot but within a small group of bacteria so still uh, difficult to say how it happens in the other life forms yeah, uh, yeah. Uh. thank you sir for your time okay no, welcome